I was always, I was always fighting over all the stupid. Well, that's what you did. You either played football in the street, cricket in the street, or you was fighting in the street. It was uh, King's Cross. It was uh, very poor. Uh, very few people had a front door. Uh, that would be chopped down in and used for fuel for the fire in the winter if the landlord was uh, stupid enough to put one on. The windows all rattled. If the glass broke, you stuck a bit of cardboard in. If you had a hole in your shoe, you put a bit of cardboard in that. Uh, everything was patched up. We didn't think of ourselves as a slum. We probably never heard of the term, but uh, that's what it was. My dad used to, uh, he was a plumber and he had a big blow lamp. And every weekend he used to go round with the with the blow lamp, round the floorboards, in round the wooden beds, uh, burning all the bugs and lice. My mum would give us uh, she'd have what she called a bottle of carbolic liquid, uh, and she would rub that into our hair, and then she had a fine tooth comb. Some people, the families, just used to shave the hair of their kids, so that uh, there was nowhere for the lice to live. Well, I, I, I happened to belong to a little gang called the Wakefield Street Gang because that's where I lived. I was always, I was always fighting over all the stupid. Well, that's what you did. You either played football in the street, cricket in the street, or you was fighting in the street. It was my birthday, and I was out of work. Walked down to the lane. And then on the crossover, crossover into uh, Trafalgar Square, and I met me down Whitehall. And it's about 10 to 11, so I decide I'm going to go and watch them change the guard in Whitehall, all the horses and stuff like that. And uh, this bloke tapped me on the shoulder like that, a big bloke. And I looked round, and he had this uniform, a big red coat, big red band, medals. Christ knows what, he had the lot. And he, he suggested, he said, well, you want to come and have a cup of tea, son, and a bun in a dry. So I thought, well, that's all right, because I hadn't had no breakfast. So I thought, well, that's a good idea, you know. I think, oh, yeah, I'll have a cup of tea and a bun. So he says, follow me. So I followed him across the road, across Whitehall, in the, in the Scotland Yard. And he said, go and see those two blokes. He's pointed two blokes out who was sitting at this. And he disappeared, along with a cup of tea. And then they asked me all sorts of questions, like where I'm born, what's my name, where do I live, how old I am, are you sure? Yeah. And then they said, did you go and see those two blokes with the white coats on? So I did as I was, did as I was told. And then... Uh, they stripped me off, boom, 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 uh, bend down, cough, and, and that's it. And the next thing is on the, another desk, and the bloke's writing out a railway warrant to Winchester the next morning. Uh, shilling, a shilling he handed over, yeah. 12 pence, a shilling. And of uh, course that was, that was, you know, a shilling. Was, you only got 10 bob a week for a week's work. And I'm in the army, and it didn't take ten minutes. You get down to Winchester, and then uh, you've got this sergeant marched in. The first thing you do, they they give you a meal, then they march you to uh, the showers, and you have a shower. Then there's a bloke there who cuts your hair. And 
and then there's a doctor who examines you, and then you go in another room where they've got all the kit laid out. And when you come out of that room, you're a soldier. But uh, no, you go in and you're surrounded by blokes you've never known before, and you size them all up. You're taught at the start you can't survive on your own because uh, you're not an individual any longer. This is the main thing. You're part of a, of a very, very close-knit team who uh, rely on their uh, togetherness to survive. Well, my life was regulated from then. I, I couldn't do what I wanted to do. I had to do what I was told. You looked at the detail board every morning, you knew what you was on. All you had to do was to do it. Then when you finished it, that's it. Oh, it's a change, all right, yeah, for the better. The thing about the army, I had, I had three meals a day and uh, all my clothes were new. If the shoes, boots were worn, I could take them to the snobs and he'd repair them for nothing. All I had to do was to obey orders. Oh, haven't you grown? Oh, you do look, oh, you do look, oh, I want you to go round to Aunt Juicy. Go round to Aunt Maisie's tomorrow, sir. Let us see your nice new uniform. I want you to take me to church on Sunday. Show off your nice new uniform. All mothers are proud of their sons. You find that a lot of these regiments that are raised and rely on their intake from these big cities where all these sort of, this rough life is. They are different than the country regiments and the guards. They are different. There's no two ways about it. And I think it's all due to uh, the sort of life that they had led. It's the London days when you your street gang, you trust the members in your street gang. The Germans were in a far more superior position, had better weapons better trained and everything, but we could hold them and the people of London could stand up to the bombing. I think they produced a society we could stand up to anything.